Uh, thank you very much. And what a panel of heroes, uh, the best and the bravest and the brightest. Thank you for being here and bearing witness to a very ugly truth as to what Hong Kong is doing. It has been a long, hot summer in Hong Kong, as we all know. The inspiring and courageous protests there are a daily reminder of the stark <clears throat> differences between free and authoritarian societies. The people of Hong Kong have shown the world that a free people will not accept the boot of repression without protest. I see frame it. The millions of Hong Kong protesters have also done the world a great service. They have exposed Beijing's plan to erode freedoms guaranteed to the people of Hong Kong by international treaty. They have exposed Beijing's pernicious and repressive behavior. And make no doubt about it, the Chinese government is both uniquely repressive and incredibly paranoid about maintaining its grip on power. Today, there are over a million Uyghurs interned in Orwellian political education camps. Human rights lawyers have disappeared and have been horribly tortured in detention. Christians, Tibetans, and labor activists, and journalists as well, face egregious abuse and the most intrusive system of surveillance operating in the world today. Blaming the United States government and blaming the U.S. Congress for the protests is an act of cowardly propaganda. It is time for the U.S. policy to respond to Beijing's long-term ambitions in the Hong Kong and pass the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act. Five years ago, Mr. Chairman, I introduced the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act with my CEE co-chair, Senator Brown. The bill allows for a more robust U.S. response to the steady erosion of Hong Kong's autonomy and human rights. Over the years, Senator Rubio and I have upgraded the bill, and you as well, to reflect the kidnapping of booksellers, the disqualification of elected lawmakers, the political prosec prosecutions of Joshua Wong, Nathan Law, Benny Tai, and others. However, every time, every single time we pushed for passage, there was opposition from the diplomats, the so-called experts, the committee chairs in both the House and the Senate, and the American Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. We were told not to upset the status quo. We were told that upgrading U.S. policy would undermine their efforts with Beijing and its hand-selected political leaders in Hong Kong. We were told that our bill would cost U.S. businesses. It is the exact same advice that we have been hearing on China since Tiananmen Square. And the big issue was then MFN. China experts have failed the American people, and their advice helped to gut parts of our own economy. Their advice this time will fail the people of Hong Kong as well. This commission and so many of our colleagues in both the House and the Senate stand united with the people of Hong Kong and will not be silent in the face of threats to their continued liberties, guaranteed liberties and way of life. The U.S. and the international community cannot be silent or just make noise with nothing that backs it up. The whole world has a stake in a peaceful and just resolution of Hong Kong's and the survival of the one country, two systems mo uh, model. Hong Kong people, ya yeah, yo.